I thought that he always came from a very privileged home until very recently when he said to me that his father was a carpenter with seven kids and he was number four out of those seven and that all the children were doing amazing things in fact as, as amazing as I thought that he was he was the least accomplished of all his siblings and he said well because his father could put his children into public schools that were free and they got quality education that enabled them soar out of the country today how many people can testify about stuff like that just last weekend I was in my hometown okay Messia Kitty and an uncle of mine that I used to look up to when I was growing had, you know now become a, a pensioner and he was there and, and you know and, and so when he saw me ah fella 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 and so after hugging and all of that he said to me show me okay. They haven't paid our pension in almost three years. He said, you know, I, I, you have to be able to help me. You know, I, I, need, I really need your help. And I'll say it the way he said it. He said, go back, get 3,000 naira. Only for me. That to him was help. Tears came to my eyes. How does a pensioner get to the point where he's looking for 3,000 naira and that is his aspiration. Nigeria is not working for that, my uncle either. Upper week, I was in Abuja, and in one of the hotels, I will not say which one it is, I met a young man who was there on his shift when I arrived sometime in the afternoon. And then I had gone up and came back quite late at night because I, was, I had been in a meeting that lasted many long hours. And by the time I came in around 1 a.m. or 2 a.m., the guy was at another duty post, but he was still the same person there. So I asked him, do you work 24 hours? He said, yes, sir. He said, we work 24 hours, and then we take one day off and come back and work 24 hours. Where on earth do you hear that? And then he broke my heart when he said to me, sir, I said, how come you're doing this? He said, well, sir, I need thing to be able to keep body and soul together. He said, I'm a graduate of the Federal University of Agriculture. Where here? I think it's it. And again, I hugged him, and I said to him, Nigeria is going to be better. He said, sir, if you say so, I believe. <laughs> Nigeria is not working for that guy either. Nigeria is not working for that person who's struggling to be able to, to sell their goods on the road, and yet they are so scared of every time a green boss passes by, and they are going to come and arrest them for kicking against the indiscipline. How do, you, how do you arrest someone who you have not created jobs for? Somebody who is trying to make a living. How do you call a person who is carrying a tray of bananas on their head in the afternoon? How do you call that person in discipline? Perhaps it's because we have not yet desired the nation that we wanted, but maybe more than that because we haven't determined what needs to be done. And when you look at what needs to be done in our nation, I'll rush through this because, because my time is far spent. It's clear that what needs to be done in our nation must deal with all the great challenges that we have. And today our challenges range from the fact that we are barely a nation. We are a country. We need to build a nation. Nigeria is divided along ethnic lines, religious lines, social lines, tribal lines, political lines, every line. And those who divide us are doing so, so that they can continue to rule over us. So we need to integrate our nation and make ourselves one united nation once again. When I was growing up, I didn't know which of my friends was Igbo or Hausa or anything. I didn't know that the Bakares were Muslims. I didn't know. It didn't matter to me. They were just my friends. They were fellow country people. We can unite our nation again. We need to unite our nation with a strong vision. Every time nations are built, they're built like houses. You bring people with different skills to build. But you must remember, before they even come to display their skill, they first of all must know what are we building. Many of you are going to work every morning, waking up 4.30 some of you, 6.30 others. But most of you are getting into traffic or trying to beat traffic. And I'm asking you, 
as you go to work, what are you trying to build? What is the vision for your industry that all of us are working together as professionals to be able to build? What is the vision for a nation that we together are going to school to be able to learn how to contribute to? What is Nigeria's vision? And a vision must be a picture of a desirable future that is so inspiring that the people are willing to do everything they can to make it happen. That is what a vision is. I'm asking you, what is Nigeria's vision? But just in case you can't tell me, don't worry. Nigeria will soon have a vision. On the 29th of May, I would have the privilege of addressing the world and shaping a new vision for Nigeria. And not only would I shape that vision for Nigeria, I'm going to also present to you a roadmap by which Nigeria can arrange or get to that vision. But we also need values that unite us. Most importantly, we need to reorient our nation. We need to place values back into our nation. And then, of course, we need to secure our people. For the job of every government is to make the life of people better. And starting with making the lives of people better, you must protect their lives and their property. Ladies and gentlemen, 3,094 people have been recorded killed since May 29, 2015. We can do better than that as a nation. Don't you agree? We must secure our people. And then, of course, we must provide power, because without power, then we cannot really be able to build anything. And nothing that we build will work. So we need infrastructure, power, roads, rail. But everybody knows these things. You see, you have to understand that governance is not such a complicated thing. It's just the people that are complicated that are currently in governance. Because what do you say to a person who you know what he's supposed to do, but the guy insists to be paid, apart from his salary, to do what it is that he knows he needs to be doing. That is a complicated person. What do you say to someone who, who looks at, at a vibrant generation of youth and says that they are lazy? That is a complicated person. What do you say to people who refuse to be able to, to, to empower the next generation and rather say that the next generation is not ready for leadership? That is a failed generation, but that's a complicated generation. Governance is not really as complicated as we make it look. Governance only requires competent people who are capable, but more importantly, people who have the right character, people who will not steal even if they cannot be caught. <laughs> governance requires also people with compassion in their hearts. It's very difficult for anybody to say they have compassion and lives are lost and there is not even a sound that comes out of the mouth of the leaders. 